Hey, Morpheus Godfather, Calvin Zito, and we're kicking off a new adventure here, a video blog that we'll probably do about once a month, where we're going to look at a deep dive into something around HPE Morpheus software, some feature, uh, and this month, we're going to look at a new feature for HPE Morpheus VM Essentials. I've got Sean Jabro with me. Sean, you're going to be my co-host on most of these because you're my man for doing these demos. Let everybody know who you are and what we're uh, going to be doing here today. Sure. Uh, Sean Jabber, I'm the Director of Enablement for Morpheus Software. been with the Morpheus company for almost six years now. Um, my job and my goal is always to make sure that people understand how the product works. And this new migration feature is a pretty big deal, so we want to make sure everyone has a decent understanding of it. Yeah, when I need help figuring stuff out, you're going to be my guy, uh, both for these videos, but when other people in the community ask me. So, uh don't ask me too many questions because I can't hit them up for everything. <laughs> anyway, we're about to look at this new bulk migration tool. Why don't you set it up with a little bit of background and then let's jump into seeing the demo. Sure. So uh, since we have the new HVM hypervisor cluster that we are positioning out here as a way to help people lower their VMware bill a little bit, we need a way for people to get off of VMware and into the HVM cluster, whether it's in the VM Essentials or whether it's Morpheus Enterprise. So we've developed this migration tool that does conversion on the fly from your VMDK into a QCOW image and will help you migrate your workloads. Um, right now it's an offline image conversion, so there is an outage that you do have to take for this, but uh, we let you build out your plans ahead of time and then you can run them at your convenience. Okay, so you create a plan and then you run the plan. Do you have one that we can look at that you've started, or can we start a plan from scratch? Uh, what do we start with here? Yeah, so I've got a couple that I've actually run already um, that have completed and done what I wanted them to do, but I figured we could just start from scratch on a brand new plan with some fresh VMs to get this going. So let's go ahead and we'll call this one live demo, and this is our migration plan. So what we're doing is we're just setting up to make sure that we know uh, what we want to do, what VMs we're going to migrate here. So we need our source. If you have multiple vCenters attached, you would select from there. And also, if you have multiple different HVM clusters, you can select from that. Here is our resource pool and the group. This is the infrastructure group that this uh, VM set is going to go into once created. That means who's going to have access to it, basically. So we're going to take a look at a couple of different VMs here. I've got a larger VM and a smaller VM that I like to do this with. This is a, a running website right now that I have running live, and this is just a, it's not a real database, it's just a fake DB server with uh, a larger utilized disk space, so we can kind of see both of those go together. So when you come in here to select your VMs, we're just deciding which VMs we want to migrate in this particular plan. This isn't going to execute, this is just setting this all up. One thing to be aware of when you are setting this up is that you need to make sure that the username that you are using on all of the VMs has to be identical. So we have a single username capability. It has to be sudo, it has to be administrator on Windows, and has to be able to perform all of the tasks that we need to perform on it. So for mine, I've just got a user called migration built in, and I've got a super secret password that goes in here. And you'll notice that I've got three different networks available on my source, and this is from that database server. So I'm going to align all of those networks here. Now that web server is actually on the same network, this net 01. So it only shows up once because all VMs that are on this network are gonna get put on this network. All NICs that are here will go to this, et cetera. So we're mapping that accordingly. Per VM is not an option. So this is global, all NICs that are on this network end up on that network. Um, same thing with the storage. Now you only see one storage, I've only got one data store in my environment, it's a smaller lab. But if you have multiple source data stores across all of the different VMs, then the same thing applies. If I had you know, my silver, my platinum source in here and a silver and platinum on my destination, I could select between those to make sure that each disk arrives on the right data store. You do have the option to skip pre-checks and skip guest tool installs. Uh, I would recommend against that. Um, I would just go ahead and leave those unchecked so that you can do your pre-checks and make sure that everything is going to flow right ahead of time. Now, 
Here we're just looking at the setup. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take these two VMs. We're going to do a migration of them using this account. We're not going to skip our pre-checks. Here's the network alignment. Here's our storage alignment. And we'll just hit complete. So now we have this in our demos section. So I'm going to come back out. I'm sorry, in our migrations section. I'll come back out here. And now you can see this one is pending. And we have these two that are completed. In this demo, live demo uh, migration plan, we have two options we can run and we can delete. Here's our progress. Obviously nothing's going on yet. It is just in pending state waiting for us to initiate this migration. We can look at our source VMs. These are running in vCenter. So if I were to come over to this tab here and look at my vCenter, these are the VMs that we're looking at here. And if I was to go to this particular IP address, if I bring that up here, I have this little website that's just running as a, a little backend test to make sure that everything goes right when things come up on the other side. In our destination, we have nothing yet because we haven't built any VMs. We haven't initiated this out. And then history, obviously, there's nothing going on yet. So what we can do is run this plan. And it's just going to ask us, are we sure we want to run this migration now? And I'll say yes. And we are off to the races. I'll give it a quick refresh so we can see where it's going. Oh, it was already doing it. Blink and you miss it. It did the pre-checks on these. And now it's running that migration for us. You can see it's in progress. Destination has nothing in it just yet. But we look over at the history and we can see for each VM in this migration plan, we are starting to build things out. So it's preparing the source workload. It's going to create the target resource. That's when we'll see a VM, a blank VM show up in the destination here. Give it a little refresh and see if it shows up. Yep, there they are powered off. They now exist. And if we go over to our vCenter, we should see those VMs are powered down and we have the OVF templates being exported. This VM right here is pretty small, so it should happen pretty quickly. Um, in my environment, I'm running 10 gig network across uh, the same storage between all of these hosts, uh, between the vCenter ESXi hosts and the HVM hosts. So the average time I've seen on this particular VM uh, when running it on this size, it's pretty small. You can see it's only got about 8 gigs of used storage. It does do thick provision and it is created at 20 gigs. That takes about four to five minutes. This VM is 130 gigs, give or take, in size, uh, and 95% utilization thick provision, and this one takes about 20 minutes in my environment. And that's not a testament to how long it will take in anyone else's environment. Um, it's going to be fully dependent on your network and your setup. But you can sit here and you can watch this as it goes, and there's not really much else to speak about um, while it's doing this outside of there's, you know, the clone is happening real time from the ESXi host here, whichever ESXi host was managing this VM. That OVF template is being exported and directly into the data store for the HVM cluster and converted to a QCAL on the fly. So you can see we're already at 46% on this one. So we should see something happening pretty quick here. So let's throw some questions in here while we wait for the migration to finish and get to the end of it. Um, you did two VMs, and obviously this is called the bulk migration tool. So tell us a little about how many VMs are we supporting with this first release, and is it going to get to be more at some point? What can you tell us about the number of VMs? Yeah, so theoretically you can go pretty high, um, but I know from our internal testing, the max that we have tested at one time is 20. I don't know the size of those VMs that have been tested against. Um, I've run, I want to say in my lab, I think I've run 15 at most, and it was still a pretty quick run, but it was all very small VMs, right? These little 10, 20 gig uh, Ubuntu VMs. So your, your mileage may vary on that, and it might be dependent on how you have your configuration and how you want to take your outages as well, right? You might not want 100 VMs all out at the same time in case something does go awry during that migration. So I would personally plan your plans around application outages as opposed to throwing everything at the wall and trying to get it to migrate all at once. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when we kicked off the bulk migration, it did the pre-check. Can somebody run that pre-check before they actually start the migration? Currently, no. Um, right now, there is... Um, work being done, right? This is initial release, get things out. And I think, believe that's going to be one of the things that we're 
And if somebody's created a migration plan, can they edit it or is it just the run and the delete button? It's right now it's just the run and delete buttons and it should be hopefully added in soon. So far it looks like one of the VMs is done migrating. Uh, it's still moving the other one that has the larger, that was the larger of the two. Uh, so we're making progress here, Sean. Yep. Yeah, so we can actually go see. It's probably not completely up if we go look at the instances themselves. Oh, yep, it's already up and running. So if I click on this one, we'll double check. And these did have um, static IP addresses. So it's in its startup phase. We can view the history on this particular VM to see how it was built on the Morpheus or the VM Essentials Manager side. Here. It's waiting for that startup to complete. It's going to do some more checks. Okay, a few more questions here. The actual migration, can the source data be removed from the source storage? Not with the migration itself. So since this is, is uh, version one, we don't want to remove anything from the back end before validating that everything is up and running and working properly. So we leave all of this in place on your vCenter. So in case something goes wrong during the migration, even if it shows successful, but perhaps there's some issues with the networking and you want to be able to revert, you can always just come back and power this VM back on. So you mentioned at the beginning you've been testing this, done a bunch of migrations. I'm sure some have failed. Uh, is there something, uh, additional information that you can see, say your VM administrator doing this migration, is there usually enough information there for you to figure out uh, okay, why did this fail and how can I fix it so it'll run next time? Yeah, generally speaking, so there's a couple of options here under the Administration Health tab. You can go to the Morpheus Logs section here and you can just look for warnings and errors, things like that, and it'll kind of walk you through. Um, but my personal preference is always to tail the logs from the back end through an SSH session because then you get live feedback on everything. So you SSH into the manager and then you just tail the logs there. And it'll give you plenty of information. If you put the wrong password in, if uh, it doesn't understand the OS that it needs to migrate, you get you get plenty of error output on that. And we're going to work to get more of that into the history on the migrations so that when you're actually running it here, you'll be able to see that get elevated into this spot here. Yeah, and for people that don't know, actually, right now we're pretty much on a monthly cadence. There's a new version every month. So we're looking at this one, it's version 8.0.8. 8.0.9 is scheduled. We're now what? It's early August for us. Uh, so it should come out sometime end of August, beginning of September. Yeah, I, I believe we just hit code freeze on um, 8.0.9. And so where are we at with this second bigger VM that we are migrating? Yeah, this one's probably gonna take a while. I don't know if we wanna wait around for it, but what we can do is Validate here. If I come back in and we go look at the instance that's up, I believe the IP address is the same here. So if we say that that's 6.25, that is 6.25. I'm going to refresh this page and my website is still live. The website is back up and we can go look back at our history on our migration and validate how long that actually took us. So for this particular VM, four minutes. Four minutes and six seconds to do the entire migration. Uh, that was, like I said, a 20 gig VM. Now, it, there is one thing to be aware of there, right? The, the requirement is you must have enough storage on the destination for thick provision VM. There's work being done on that. To... Well, I think everybody got a really good idea of what it does. Um, Sean, any closing thoughts that you would want to leave people with as we've looked at this new function of bulk migration within VM Essentials? No, like I said, um, and you even reiterated, we are iterating on this product. This is Rev1, so there's a lot more that will be coming. We like to hear back feedback from uh, the community. So what is actually needed, what is useful, uh, what will help with this. And I would just make sure the people that are looking at this tool focus on your low complexity workloads first. Uh, some of the things that we don't have available like RDMs and things like that. So make sure you know, temper expectations when you're doing your migrations that we have more growth on the way, but I would start with your lower complexity workloads and basic systems for testing this out. And definitely 
you know, do some test VMs, run your migration plans, see how it's going to look in your environment. And that'll give you a better view uh, than anything else on what it's going to look like from a timeline standpoint. So you did mention give us feedback. I want to point people to a place where they can give us that feedback. And that's by going to our community website. Go to community.hpe.com. On the left side, you'll see a drop down that says forums. Click on software, HPE Morpheus software, and then go to VM Essentials. You'll see the VM Essentials message board. And that's a great place for you to leave feedback. And the free trial is out there too. So just Google HPE Morpheus. Uh, VM Essentials free trial. It'll take you to the website and you can get the free trial, play around with it for, you get 60 days of the free trial uh, and just play around with it for yourself. Sean, thanks a lot. Hopefully this is the first of many of these going forward. Appreciate your time and expertise at looking at the Spalk migration tool today. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Calvin. If you want to learn more, Click this link on the bottom left to take you to the hpe.com page where there's a lot more content. If you want to learn more about HPE Morpheus VM Essentials, click on the playlist on the top left. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching this video.